cell biology. Now, one of the remarkable things about living organisms is they're remarkably well organized. They're composed of structures and organs, and these organs themselves are composed of tissues. And what a tissue is, essentially, is it's a group of similar cells with some extracellular products. So groups of similar cells come together to produce the tissues of the body which comprise the organs, which comprise the whole organism. So cells are often described as the unit of life. And it's quite true. A cell is a living unit. And indeed, some of you who have looked at biology might have found things like amoebas, which are independent unicellular organisms, independent units of life. But we're going to look at cells in the context of human physiology today and how cells can be studied. So the subject is cell biology, and the correct name for cell for the study of cells is cytology. So we're going to look at cell biology or cytology today. Now, there's different ways you can study cells, and one is by using a light microscope. And if you do look at cells under a light microscope, you'll see something which is vaguely like this. So let's, let's draw a diagram now of what cells look like under a, a light microscope. And all we're going to do is draw a diagram of a generalized animal cell, not any particular cell, a generalized animal cell as seen under the light microscope. So it can be seen that it's a, a unit like this. And it, it is demarcated from the rest of the environment by a membrane. So it's a unit of life surrounded by this uh, cell membrane here. Cell membrane round about the outside. Now there may be another cell immediately next to it or there may not, it, it just depends. A cell membrane round about the outside marking the edge of the cell. Then in the middle, you see another area, and it depends how you prepare your microscope slide sections, but very often this is a dark staining area. There's a darker area like this in the middle of the cell. This is the cell nucleus. nucleus, dark staining area in the center of the cell. And actually with a good microscope, sometimes round about the nucleus, you can actually detect another membrane. So the, the cell is, is uh, in a membrane, but the nucleus is actually in a membrane within the cell. So with a good microscope, sometimes you can just see the membrane round about the nucleus itself, and this is referred to as the nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane round about the nucleus of the cell. But clearly there's quite a large area between the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane. And this is very often uh, fairly clear on most preparations. And this area here is referred to as the cytoplasm of the cell. The cytoplasm of the cell. Clear area in between the cell membrane, the outer membrane, and the nucleus surrounded by the nuclear membrane. And sometimes in some preparations you can see the fact that the, the nucleus is not homogeneous, there's bits in it. 
you won't be able to see any detail with a light microscope, depending on the stains that you use. But you might see that there's sort of uh, granular-like looking structures in the cytoplasm. You won't see any detail. Sometimes these are just referred to as cytoplasmic uh, granules. But what they actually are is they are subcomponents of the cell. They are components of which the cell is made up of. And the correct term for them is uh, an organelle. They are cell organelles. So cell organelles can sometimes be seen in the cytoplasm of the cell. So this whole diagram is a generalized cell as seen with a light microscope. A cell as seen under a light microscope. And later on, we'll be doing this, we'll look down a light microscope and we'll see some examples of animal cells in different tissues. Now we're going to go on now and look at some aspects of cell physiology, what cells do. And the first one we're going to look at is cell reproduction. How do cells reproduce? Because this is absolutely fundamental to human life. So let's consider this topic now, cell reproduction. And cells reproduce by dividing. One cell will divide into two, the process of cell division. So cell reproduction is by the process of cell division. Cell reproduction occurs by cells dividing. And there are two forms of cell division. The first one is referred to as mitosis. And the second one is referred to as meiosis. So two forms of cell division, mitosis and meiosis. So cell division may be mitosis or meiosis. And the one we're going to consider first is mitosis. Now, in the nucleus of the cell, there are 46 chromosomes. And these carry the genetic information to make the cell, the code to make the cell itself. So in mitosis, you start off with one parent cell, which contains 46 chromosomes. And this divides into two. And it produces two offspring cells. And we refer to these off offspring cells as daughter cells. So one parent cell produces two daughter cells. And the key thing is that each of these daughter cells also contains 46 chromosomes each. This process is mitosis. And the number of chromosomes is conserved. Therefore, mitosis is a conservation division. It's referred to as conservation division. because the number of chromosomes is conserved. 